Okay, here I am. Let's see. We're going to go over everything we just did this morning, and then we're going to talk. Cruiser says, thanks, Melissa. Weekend starts now. Cheers. You're welcome. Good job, Cruiser. Good job. Good job, everyone that did this today. And for those of you that are in here in a trial, you're observing anyways, so that's fine. That's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, let's let's do the video first. Uh, 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 uh. I'm telling you this might be done. I'm telling you this might be done. I'm telling you this might be done. That that was a perfect exit. Let let's go over it. In fact, let's look at everything from before. So I got up this morning and I looked at this and I saw this and I, you know, I saw it. And I did like this. I liked it because I had the possibility and thought this would break for a quick move. I wasn't thinking dream, dream target in this today, all right? Then, right before the open, it was one, two minutes before the open this did this, and I walked away, came back, and I'm like, oh, oh. and then this happened here. And then I thought, crap. I mean, it just couldn't wait for us. And it broke 21, two minutes before the open. And then you never know if that was it for the thing. And then, guess what? It seemed like it was. Here, let's take this off. Oh my gosh, is this holding 25? <gasps> it is, but I'm not redoing it. Anyways, okay. So then this did this. You got to pay attention. This is living in the moment. Live trading. Think on your feet. I do it very well. I do it well in trading, but I do it well in normal conversations in life with people, interacting in meetings and everything. And I'm telling you, this is good advice. The market forces you to think on your feet and you can use that in everything. Business interactions with other people, like you're having a conversation with something, someone and something comes up and you got to think on your feet. You can't stand there and act like an idiot. All right. You have to learn how to think on your feet. And you know what? The market trains you to do that. I'm training you to do that. It all helps. Solid. Solid hold 21 was on top of it. Pushed off. We didn't do anything. I said, wait, 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 wait. When it pushed to the number here, that dot didn't even have this number written down. I almost gave up on it. I was looking for something else to do. What I did like, and I did see that number, then I found the number then later. What I did like was this, was the 100% retracement of this. But I got to tell you, this doesn't look so great. In fact, this looks really bad. Uh, which sometimes I don't mind these, but I didn't like that today, specifically because of the market and the rally. But when I saw the number and then the immediate hold, I just did it. We just did it. We just did it. I called it. And it was a great entry. I mean, it was a great entry. It was because of the, it was because of the entry. It was because the entry was so tight. And then we did the ad. You could have taken it at 30, 31, 29, and then we lowered the stop to 55. I mean, that the best thing about this was the risk to reward where we the way that I called it. I mean, that, that I just it was all number based. 100%. Or we wouldn't have even done it. We wouldn't even got it, and this looks like it's over for the day. And I don't think you're going to be able to short this the rest of the day now. And we got the only trade in it with the best risk to reward. If you had the stop over the high, it didn't pay as well. I knew what the numbers were. That See, that's why you have to write them on the sheet. It helps you. It helps you stay in the trade, take the trade, not take the trade, see something right. Uh, it, 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 as you got to know the targets. You got to know the support. You got to know the resistance. And, and in reference to WFM, which we're going to go over next. This is also the other one. What was the other one we did the other day? What was the other one we did the other day? Another one we did. I think COH was something else. Something that worked good. Oh, I don't remember now. I have amnesia about everything. Every day I gotta get up and trade like a new person. But anyways, what I realized though is that the first level of resistance that I have is always the best. In an ideal world, everything holds the first level of resistance. The secondary level of resistance I still will utilize. I'm fine with that. When something is at a number that is beyond anything that I've written down, far beyond, okay, which WFM was, and we'll go over that in a minute, it's not right. 
because I'm too good at reading those numbers for support, resistance, and targets. So that was a sign, okay, with the WFM, which we're going to look at in a minute. This was not that far from the secondary level of resistance. And I saw something in the live price action that we took it. But I will tell you, if it had gotten too far away from that number, it would have been off and I wouldn't have done it. And I almost didn't do this here, but then I saw an entry and we did. And it wasn't that far from the maximum resistance I had given in the room. When something gets too far from the maximum resistance, it is problematic. And what do I mean by too far? I'm being subjective here. But like, for example, the key W. This is not too far here. Really, the maximum resistance here was 750. It got up to 760. This isn't too far. But the problem is here you can't make any money shorting this today. I don't think this goes anywhere. But I'm just using it as an example for, for, for talking about the numbers here. Okay. So this is not too far. But I wouldn't short this here now. It's not working right. It's too late. But I'm just saying, like, if this had gone too far past the maximum resistance that I gave, it would be wrong. Wrong meaning you cannot day trade it on the day. That was something that ha it happened in something that was really evident, and it wasn't COH, and it wasn't WFM, even though we're going to talk about it. It was something else that we did this week, and I can't remember what it was now. But anyways, the point's valid. And, and you need to make note of it. Ah, NVIDIA's done. Oh, my Lanta. I got out of that two pennies from the low of the day. Everybody, who? Is every, did any, uh, here, what is everybody doing with this? Did anyone retake it? It's, it's done. 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 It broke the low. It made a tail. We made money shorting that. That was a great trade. It's going to close green in the day. And we shorted it with a good risk reward trade. All because of my call. And the market's too strong. This is not going to go back down today. That was the only short that's in this today. And it's going to close green. Oh, my God. I don't have two pennies from the low. Give yourself a round of applause. I mean, this is like perfect trading, professional trading at its finest today to make money anywhere on the downside today. You, you are a professional trader if you just made money shorting anything that exists in existence today in the market. Look, look at this. Look. Yep, new high today in the market. Here, Braulio's on the market. Anybody else? And I said, I think you got to be in it all day. I think you got to be in it all day in here, but who knows? Maybe I could go by lunch. New high in the market today. No chance of failure. Market higher. This is like amazing. Anyways, perfect trade in NVIDIA. Mm. All right. So that was the NVIDIA one. We did it. It's done. Key W. I don't think it was anywhere because of the way that it rallied into the open. Time of the day, 10.06. Market too strong. Did like the gap. Didn't like the choppiness of it. It's a little thin, a little spready. I saw some things in the morning that kind of put me off of this, although I did see it last night and liked it. I think we focused on the best thing. I know we did. It's the only thing that worked. Um, the SFM was not half bad, but I know this is very spready. It looks like it settled down now. It did have a big topping tail thing, and then it broke the low. Tough to do in here. You would have had to put the stop all the way over 29, which would have been insane. No risk to reward. Dropped, broke, rallied back. You know, you could have done this here, but even if you did, you're only up less than 30 cents. Actually, this is setting up like a short here now. If you're desperate for a trade, which you shouldn't be, if you did a video, you could do 33 by 65. I really would just stop. But I think it's going to be tough to short anything today with the market. Let's just see if anything's red. Well, there are some red things. Let's see what they are. Well, they, no, these are just things that are down. They're not even red. They're not even red. They're just downs. Just tell me if anybody sees anything that has any red in it at all. I, I don't think anything has any red in it at all. DSCO, which is worth 99 cents, is red. <laughs> all right, let's go over the... Um, what do I want to go over next? The market or the uh, WFN? over WFM. Does anyone have any questions? And then we're going to go over WFM uh, after this. I mean, other market after this. All right. So as it turns out, WFM did end up gapping up here this morning with the market. It's not really going anywhere crazy higher for the moment. Do I think this ends up going over the bar from yesterday, which would be over 44, the whole number? It might. 
it might do that. It didn't work right the day of the gap. It should have. But I will say that this is why you have a stop. You have a stop in place to protect you from something not working. What's worst case scenario? Risk one R. If you take a second trade, then worst case scenario, down two R's. Being down one R or two R's is not the end of the world. And anyone that cried the blues about taking two stops in this yesterday needs to evaluate their risk. Because you got to be able to risk two R's on any given day and not be complaining about it. Was I upset this didn't work yesterday? Yes. Did I really, really love this gap yesterday? Yes. Has it failed in the daily chart here, though? No. No, it hasn't. Market gapped up. Market is rallying hard. This is holding under 44. But getting back to the point of the resistance numbers, this was nowhere near, nowhere near the numbers I had given for it to hold. And once it surpassed them aggressively, it was all over. We found yesterday in the chart where this held and why, but I don't think that holds for the long term. But as far as a day trader goes, you gotta make money on the day. Your risk therefore needs to be defined you have to know where you're getting in, where you're getting out, and you have to know how many trades you're taking on the day and when you're gonna stop. And I'm very glad I didn't do this a third time yesterday. Now, the important thing that I wanna point out about this when I was reviewing it last night was, that WFM, although it did not work as a short, was not a long, and it is still not a long, okay? So we've talked about this before. Some people still talk these words like gap fills. I don't like that talk because it doesn't describe anything. Even though people use it and say gap fills are a strategy, they're not. There was no way to go long this yesterday. You could not have played it long. It was not a long, but it was not a short. It was a gap down short failure on the daily chart of WFM on the day for us to day trade it. You could not intraday short it, but you couldn't intraday buy it. There was no proper place to buy this, and it wouldn't have made any sense. Why? The gap rated well as a short. But I want to point out what I'm discussing so you understand conceptually here how money moves in these gaps. It had a massive push up that happened very quickly, which we saw, and flatlined the rest of the day. When the market was doing its thing, this is the 15 minute of WFM. This is the 15 minute of the market yesterday from 10 o'clock Eastern time until 1230. It did nothing but power trend up. Oops, uh, I just lost him, hold on. Ten o'clock to twelve thirty, the market power trended up. WFM nine thirty to eleven thirty, power trended up. Okay. After that, it's sideways the entire time. This made no sense to buy in here at all. This made no sense to buy either. So what often happens when we see this in a failure? You see this today in this, actually. You see this today in this. There's no way to buy this stock today, but you can't short it either. It's a failure. We didn't, we didn't lose any money in it. I never called it. We never did it. It never triggered. It never set up. Okay. But what happens is sometimes is someone, well, there's two things that happen. Sometimes you have something that happens that it is short covering that comes in aggressively. Into the open hard and it flatlines. That's what's happening in the key W that's not getting bought. This though actually got bought and bounced hard after 9.30 and did get bought, but the buying came in quickly and flatlined. So it didn't continue. When something's correct, the, the gap itself will set up right, have a good entry, follow through, and continue, and go to the target. Even if it's not the dream target. I'm not talking about dream targets, all right? This quick, quick action into the open that happened in WFM flatlined right afterwards, but it did have somebody came in and bought a position in it. Otherwise, it would never have acted the way it did in the open, which, which we talked about in live time. I mean, I was sitting there watching, I was like, what? 
And that was, you know, that was buying. Okay. That's what it looks like. Anyways, that flat line then though. So therefore, it held a number, again, way over the maximum resistance, so we couldn't short it, but it did hold. Therefore, the control, even though the control is on the side of the actual bulls on the day, meaning because the buying came in there, that was it was, a, it was a lot of buying. It was enough buying to spike us through our actual short and stop us out and enable us that we couldn't possibly short it again that day. But there was no follow through because there wasn't any charge of it. There, the charge, the actual controlled charge had not switched. I don't even know if this makes any sense. But what I'm saying is often when we see something that doesn't work out right, and 90% of the time we don't do them because they never set up, which I can see it either A, reverse whoosh, or B, just act like the KW and they never set up because I know the numbers and they violate them and they just never trigger right. Because I'm not shorting every rally. We never, never do that. We, we're looking for specific criteria. But in any event, when that happens, whether we do it and it fails or whether we just don't do it and I see it and I say we're not doing it, and I can tell that it's a failure, which was not the case on this until the second one. Either way, it's because of one of two things, the short covering that comes in that creates the push off. And I'm only talking about gaps that actually rate well, by the way. Or it's actual buying that comes in on the day but isn't the person in control. How do you know? The rating system. That's how you know. That's how you know. Now this brings me to the point that I'm trying to make today. And then I am going to let everybody go early today. You've got to have conviction in the rating system that I taught you about how to read price analysis. You cannot be concerned about the fact that WFM didn't work yesterday. You cannot lose conviction in the gap rating system or all is lost. When I go and I look at something and I'm analyzing it and I see what it did, which we did talk about in the daily chart of this, I know what happened there. And, and, I, and I saw the spot. I saw the number within one penny, and I also saw the way it acted in the, on the day, which we saw, and I could tell it was buying. But I know that was not the, in charge, but then I still had the control to lay off of the stock on the day. Let me just reset up here and stop everything. If you lose conviction in the gap rating system and therefore then flip something, try to go long this. You didn't make any money going long and it never followed through. If you went long and short and long and short and long and short, you lost. Okay, you would never have known to go long here. There wasn't any proper way, place to go long in the morning. We'll look at the one minute in a minute. But the gap rating system teaches you it's a short. Why? Because it rated over 20 points. And if you lose conviction in that, you all is lost. And therefore, you must hold the conviction. And holding the conviction means accepting sometimes that you will take a loss. But when you lose conviction, all is lost in your trading. So where do you, you revert back to the gap rating system, which is how you're reading the price analysis on the daily chart. And then you will figure out why something didn't work or you will learn something, okay? Which we did learn something from this yesterday. But what many people make a mistake in their trading is when something doesn't work, even one trade or two trades on a day or in a week or in a month, they start to lose conviction. Now, they may be doing something that doesn't work at all, but what I do works, and those of you that are in here for any length of time know that. But what I wanna reinforce is that the strength of the conviction that you must have in order to trade must be there for you to be successful. It must be there for you to be successful or you won't be able to do NVIDIA today. And you won't be able to do another LL next week. And you won't be able to do something else that would be great that's amazing. You, you have to, is this working out right today the way that I wanted it to? Absolutely not. No. Was the gap rating there though? Yes. And we made money shorting it. And it's going to close green. So we made money shorting something today that's going to close green in a bullish market. And we lost money yesterday in something that closed green in a bullish market. Both gaps rated well. They acted differently. If you had got up this morning, though, and lost conviction in NVIDIA because of WFM and didn't do it, then you didn't make any money today. And actually, if you did two trades in WFM and one trade in NVIDIA with two losses and one trade, you are positive. And that's how it works. But if you didn't take NVIDIA because you lost in WFM, you are down from WFM. And there is nothing else to short today. So you have to have conviction in the strategy and the rating system that I taught you. And the minute that you lose that, all is lost. 
And this goes in reference to looking at the directional bias. Because if you wanted to go long WFM yesterday, that screws up your conviction. Because you know, you knew in the morning, when I talked about it all morning, that it was a great short, even though it didn't set up on the day. Which we didn't know to the open. But I'm just saying, though, that going long and short and flipping things, there was no proper long in here. Gap fills don't work as we know. The, the people controlling WFM are holding it down. But the level of resistance was too far away to proceed with shorting it on the day yesterday. And even here now. So I said stay off of it for now. But, I, but look at this today. And look at this today. Okay? So you see here. Who is in control of this? You've got to know. And how do you know the reading system? The rating system tells you, if I had unlimited money, someday I might, I probably would merge my day trading with overnights. And, and you know what? I would probably never lose then because unless something unexpected happened. Because my read on these gaps when they rate well is, is, is either always right on the day or in the long term. And that's how I'm able to read the market. So let's just go right to the market. So Dave asked me something and I forget what it was and he's already signed out, but does anyone else have any questions about the market? I did do a market video this morning. I did say if you're long in the market, you'll have to be in all day. I'm going to reiterate that here now because it's 1020, but the market is definitely higher. And if we don't make a new high today, we will next week. We're setting up to do it. I said the buying came into the market today. It did. It came in in the gap. It came in in the morning. It came in in the pre-market. I don't remember if it was a report or not. It followed through here into the open. That's the low in the day in the market in the queues. Q's are better longer, uh, long today than the SPY, even the SPY has a bigger target just because of the positioning here of where we're holding. But the SPY has a bigger target. Overall, shorts did not get stopped out yet in this market. When that happens, it will blow higher. Does anyone have any questions or not get this or understand it? Did anyone not believe me when I said every day for the last four months the market was higher? Do you believe me now? When will you believe me? Does anyone have any questions? Again, how am I able to read this, reading the gaps and also double, triple checking myself? I go back and double, triple check myself every time I see something like what we had in the last week. I see the failure in here to go higher. I see the gap down. I see the big red bar. I see the follow through lower here. I see all of these things and I keep double, triple checking myself and I keep doing that just to make sure I'm reading everything right, just to make sure I'm not missing anything, just to make sure that I'm not just saying that because I'm just saying it, that I'm really saying it because I believe it. And it's because of the gaps, but it's the conviction as well. The conviction, which is that I know I know how to read gaps. And I know that what I'm reading is right. I still double, triple check myself all the time. And you must do that. It's not about ego. For the people that are saying the market's going to fall, it's just because they want it to. And they don't even want to admit that they're wrong. And they may not even want to admit they're wrong when the market makes a new high. And then they'll say, this is just going to happen and this is the end of it then and whatever they'll say. You have to check your information. You, you're, you may not be right all the time. Nobody's right all the time. All right? I'm not perfect either, but I get it right a lot. And you know what? That's all you need to do to make money. That's all you need to do to make money. It's just really, that's all that you need to do. If you're getting it right more than you're getting it wrong, you're up. Jaguar Paw never lost conviction. You believe me? And you're also in this as a swing trade long, correct? Or did you do it as an option? I forget. Is this an overnight for you or an option for you? I forget what you did with the market here, Jaguar Paw. Mm. I should make up a test. That's right, an option trade. Good. I should make up. A, I should. I should make up a quiz. But what would the questions be? I should just make up a quiz about something and send it out to everybody in the room. It would basically be a test of your own conviction. But I'm not sure how I would ask the questions. I have to come up with that. That's a great idea. I, I, I don't know what I'd ask, though, but there's a way that I could test you. Gauge your conviction on a scale of 1 to 10. And, you know, it often reflects itself in your results. So, you know, all you have to do is look at your results. Your results are there. You're doing something right. If they're not, something needs to be corrected. And for those of you that are new, I understand there's a learning curve sometimes, but 
If there's ever a time to correct them, the time is sooner rather than later. When a problem arises, it's best to confront it and nip it in the bud. This is done. Oh my gosh, it was a great exit. Ooh, was that real? Oh, this was from this morning, I think. Look at that. I don't want to lose that now. I have to snag at that. Does anyone have any questions about anything? Great job today. Great job. We had a good week, even though yesterday WFM didn't work out right. We still had a good week. And you will have that. Next week will be a good week. There'll be stuff to do. Let's see if there's anything on Monday. And ask me any questions. If not, everybody's going to the gym. Have a great weekend. Let me see what's out Monday. Monday, May 11th. Classes next weekend, May 16th and 17th. One class a month of May for this coming earning season. Some of you already signed up. Today is the last day for the special. If you want to sign up for that, it's the last day. And for any retakes, if you feel like you want to retake the class for this earning season, email me about signing up for the retake. Some of you already did that too. Let me just see what next week is. I did finally, finally, finally set dates for the Bullish Gap class. Here, I'm going to write it in the room for those of you who already signed up. Uh... May 28th and 29th. I'm going to do it in two days during the week, 12 to 6. Those of you that are already signed up, write those dates down. It's Thursday and Friday. We do have a lot of things Monday morning. Well, be here early. Well, it is earning season. Uh, SFM worked? Yeah, it looked like it was going to, but I just, why? Why do anything else? Surf Dog, did you do it? It worked. Let's see how much it moved. Oh, it was good. Did you do it? I said you could do this in here, 33 by 65. It had a move. This was three hours too. Congratulations. Did you do it? Did anybody do this? I called it. It worked. You, you need to be out. I mean, you should be out of this. I don't want to just sit here and keep calling trades all day. You should be long the market if you want to. You're in it all day. SFM, I just called. It worked. I guess Surf Dog did it. If anyone was the only one I wanted to do today, I shut down my platform to make sure I stuck with the, com the uh, control. And uh, that's it. Any questions from anyone about anything at all? Totally enjoyed the first week of live trading. Learned a lot. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Frequent Flyer. And everyone that's in here, some of you need fake names again. You're back to the regular names. Remember, don't forget, Brian W., you have to get a fake name starting Monday. Paul needs a fake name. He had one. You got to change that back. I think those are the only ones in here. <laughs> NVIDIA, you're not going to short this again. I just told you that this is going to hold green today. It's Friday. It's 80 degrees in New York City. Clear, sunny skies. Time of the day is 1027. I just made a million dollars. I'm going to the gym. I don't want to think about training or think about the market or look at the market or look at a chart. I don't want to do anything. But if anything, it has anything to do with my brain. I worked hard all week. I had meetings. I had stress. I had, you name it. I am done. Like Cruiser said, here weekend. Happy day. Oh, Jaguar Paw. Can we do that lesson another day? Can we? Can we talk about that Monday? We'll have time. Okay, good. All right, have a great weekend, everyone. If you're interested in the class, if you're here in a trial, email me. The special expires today, and I would leave it. Leave Navinia, leave it all. Nice call by me in the morning. I'll see everybody next week. You're welcome. Have a good weekend.